to the Prophecy Club, I guess I don't have to tell you that <laughs> there's there's not a lot of good positive uh, information in our future. However, I'm going to actually try to bring you some positive information. Now, over the 24 years Prophecy Club has been going, we have had six people make DVDs about times that they were dead and went to see heaven. A couple of them also saw hell also. But for these particular broadcasts, I'm going to be playing parts of these six DVDs talking about their experiences of going to heaven. For example, Brie Keaton, in her Translations to Heaven, saw a sword in heaven and earth, saw the courtroom of heaven, Jehovah Jireh room. Dean Braxton, in his DVD, I Was Dead for an Hour and 45 Minutes, saw Jesus and the Father. He saw everything is alive, how we travel, our glorified bodies, how we communicate and move, what we look like. He also approached Jesus and the throne of God. Then Henry Groover, in his DVD, Six Hours in Heaven, saw flowers singing the praises of the Father in a flowing robe that sings the righteousness of saints. Howard Pittman, in Fourth Beast, saw the pearly gates, how demons possess people, how Lucifer deceives millions at the point of death, and a five-point plan that Lucifer would use to take over the world. Rick Madison, in Prophetic Warnings from God, was told, tell everyone I'm real and still perform miracles and I am coming in this generation. He was shown Israel's victory over Iran, Russia, and Islam. He was shown a vision of a series of explosions in America, thousands of Jews returning to Israel, and also why God put the last six presidents in office. Then Pastor Massey, in his DVD, Visits to Heaven and Hell, he saw his mansion being built, Book of Sins and video and audio being removed, the Book of Life, an angel of the scepter, and a lot more. Now, all six of these DVDs are valued at $180. However, you can get them today for a gift of $7 each, as in a gift of $42. Send a gift at $42 Prophecy Club, or call us or go online, prophecyclub.com. $42 gets you all six DVDs, and this will encourage you. It will encourage you because this is not our home. We're just passing through. It's called the Heaven Gift Offer. Today we're going to be listening to Henry Groover, Six Hours in Heaven. I no more than finished the part of refusing the voice the second time, and I said, it was the sweetest voice I've ever heard. And she said, as my wife can do, she said, why, Henry Groover, you know better than that. You know the Word of God says Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. And you know the Word of God says my sheep know my voice and another's will they not hear. And when she said that, it was like chains broke off of my spirit. The depression left and I understood that it was not the voice of my Lord, but it was the voice of the deceiver trying to get me to turn around and forfeit the will to live and not make the petition, no, I want to go back. My family's hurt. They need me. You see, I made that petition two times in the face of all odds. And that set my will in solid motion. And the Father honored that will. So I wanted to clarify that and help you to understand that. A year later, I was down in West Phoenix at uh, Skyway Baptist Church. And uh, uh, there were about 250 people there that night. And uh, I had been asked to preach an evangelistic sermon. Baptists love evangelistic sermons. And so do I. And so I was about 15 minutes into preaching this evangelistic sermon. My mind was nowhere on anything of the accident or anything about heaven. It was regarding souls. And I was preaching away. When all of a sudden it was as though the Lord, I sensed His presence coming real close and real strong. I kind of paused like this, and it was like the Lord just nudged up beside me and whispered in my ear these words. He said, I thought I might just let you pass through the heavens and show them to you before I roll them up as a scroll and toss them aside. When he spoke that to me, right in front of those dear Baptist people, I got emotional. The tears, I couldn't hold them. They just shot out. I couldn't talk, believe it or not. I couldn't. <laughs> 
I was crying so hard. All I could say is, I'm sorry. Leaning against the podium. I'm sorry. And I was sobbing. And as I started to say, I'm sorry, I saw this vision. And in the vision, I saw myself as a seven-year-old little boy back when I was seven years old, had been in the Sunday school class. This literally happened to me. And the Sunday school teacher had taught on those very scriptures about how Jesus, how the Lord, he used, she used Jesus, how he formed the worlds by the works of his fingers and tossed them out there, the works of his hands, into the heavens. And the day is coming when he will roll them up as a scroll and toss them aside and create a whole new heaven and new earth. And what I did back in those days, that so shook me and so stirred me. Now, only the Father understands these things. He knew the day was coming that he would fulfill this petition. I came home from Sunday school and church that afternoon, and Mother was preparing dinner. I got dressed in my little cutoffs and uh, went out in my play clothes there in Arizona and went out to play. But uh, my brothers and sister went out to play too, but I really wasn't wanting to play. I wanted to get away and alone by myself. I just wanted to tuck away somewhere where none of the family would see me. There were too many of us boys in the bedroom. I couldn't do it there. So I went outside in the backyard, crawled down in the gravel underneath Dad's camping trailer, crawled under it and propped my elbows up on the axle back in behind the big wheel of the camping trailer where nobody would see me and I, propping my elbows on this axle, I was praying these words. Dear Jesus, when you roll the heavens up and toss them aside, can I be beside you and see how you do it? And can I stay beside you and watch you make new heaven and a new earth and put them in place, I would like to see you throw them out there and see how they stay. And the vision he showed me was exactly that. In the vision, it was so real, I could feel the gravel on my knees. I could feel the elbows touching the axle and myself crouching down. I could hear my little seven-year-old voice bringing that petition before the Lord. And I'll tell you, that really made me break. I stood there and I couldn't say a word. I just cried and cried and cried. Pretty soon, people all over the congregation started crying. I wasn't preaching anything, but they were crying. The next thing I knew, through my tears, they started running forward. And the altar was full of people and they were crying. Some were repenting, some were rejoicing. Some were saying, I want to know Jesus better. I want to know you better. And... They were getting close to Jesus. About two hours later, I finally was able to just explain to them what had happened. And then I, I finished in prayer and some hands went up and said, Could I say something? And one after the other said that they too, the reason they ran to the altar, they felt like Jesus came in the door and sat down and snuggled up beside them. And they just felt so loved and the presence of the Lord so precious. Well, that was a precious experience. And it gave me a better understanding why the Lord allowed me to pass through the heavens so that he could show them to me before he rolls them up as a scroll. Because he's going to do that one day. And they are getting old now. And we're hearing all kinds of reports about fragmentations of their falling apart, hitting us here on the earth and all kinds of things. Well, don't worry. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that he's going to destroy the earth with an asteroid. Will you remember that? (laughs) All right. I want to go on. I want to talk about the other side. On beyond where I was when I came back from the Milky Way. This experience took place on October the 22nd, 1988. I had just come back from walking and praying over in Europe. And uh, before I went on that trip, I had gone across and around the cities of Portland, Oregon, where we lived at that time. We live in Woodbine, Iowa now. But I had went out and walked and had 
taught and ministered in churches all around the general Portland area. And uh, I, every place I would go, I would ask the elderly people, how many here have aching bones? And I would ask for a show of hands. Well, they, when they would raise their hands, I would say to them, would you make a covenant with me? I need intercessors. I need prayer warriors. I'm going to be heading out and I'm going to be walking the path of the Crusades. And there's a lot of bloodshed across these Euro eight, eight different European countries. And I've got a lot of work to do and it's not going to be easy and I want to get it done as quickly as possible. Will you covenant with me that when your bones are aching and you can't sleep, that you'll remember Henry Groover wherever he is, that you'll pray for him and his family at home because the enemy hates my family at home too and does everything he can to try to get me to have to come back home. And so I had many elderly people of all different ages, men and women, that covenanted that they would intercede and pray for me. Well, there was a special group of about 25 in the immediate circle of the Portland area that really were faithful in this. And so when I came back, we sent out invitations to these and uh, asked them to come to a special meeting of which I would be giving a report because many of them had called my wife and had said something's going on with Henry. And she would mark the time, the day and the hour. And then when she would talk to me, she'd say, what happened in this time? And I would explain. And it was a direct confirmation that they were hearing from God. And believe me, in warfare, in the realms of spiritual warfare, there is nothing more important than being backed up with intercessors. And uh, I really appreciate the prayers of older people that have walked with the Lord for many years. And I can assure you that many testimonies we have from these people that as they begin to be faithful to intercede for me, all of a sudden they realize their bones weren't aching anymore. And yet they had a burden for me. And God would take away their aching bones. But they realize the value of prayer. We'll be right back after this message. The Extreme Summer Blowout is now in effect. You can get 50 DVDs for $250, that's $5 each. 25 for $160, that's $640 each. 15 for $120, that's 8 bucks each. 10 for $100, obviously $10 each. 6 for $70, four for 50 and two for $30. You can go to prophecyclub.com. There's a list of all the DVDs there, or you can call us and ask for the summer catalog or download the catalog at prophecyclub.com. Flip through it, then decide which DVDs you want. That's 785-266-1112 and it expires soon. Call 785-266-1112 today. Some restrictions apply. And now back to the program. But they realized the value of prayer. And so I had coverage of prayer from many ways. So here we were in this meeting of it by invitation of the intercessors. And while I was gone on that trip, my wife received a new song from the Lord. The Lord has given her about two hours of scripture songs. She plays an auto harp or piano and she sings these songs. And they've been a blessing to people all over the world. She's been with me on many trips and uh, we've sang to many countries of the earth. And uh, she's been with me five, uh, four trips now to Japan. She's been with me. And God has given her songs for the people of Japan. And it ministers to them. But the Lord had given her a new song while I was gone. And it fit perfectly and theologically into the battles that I fought. And the scriptures the Lord kept giving me. Here he gives her a song back home from those scriptures. And that's, God works with us. Uh, in many ways that way, my wife and I, we're a, we're a real team in the Lord. And we have great respect for one another in, in the way God uses us. And uh, this respect has taught us to, to keep ourselves for one another pure before the Lord. And so that God can use us together, so no wedge can get between us. And I can assure you that for many years... I would not go to a foreign city until the Lord had spoken to my wife the name of the city and the country secretly. I would never tell anybody where I was going. And then God would speak to her. And for years, within six days, as Stan said, people would just, the money would come from directions of people we didn't even know. 
that the Holy Spirit led to give to us and the monies to take care of my family while I was gone and take care of all of my expenses when I traveled were in and paid up front. Now that's my God and He does that, believe me. He's done it many years for us and uh, we have made it a point. We are a ministry and we do live by faith. And I want you to understand that our testimony in that is before the Lord. He is our provider. You receive a, a prayer letter from us that isn't full of our needs. You'll never know our needs. The only time we tell our needs is in our prayer closet before the Lord. Now that's ministry. This that you're working with is Prophecy Club. and You need to help support it as a club. And Stan clearly says this is a form of a ministry of information. But it's not a church and it's not a work of faith. It's a business. And it's a business you can belong to by being a part of it. But that's different, you understand. And any ministry that works in that realm, I am not in any way passing sentence on. Please understand that. It's just that the Lord has disciplined us in the way that we're not allowed to tell our needs. So I don't look down on someone that sends out prayer letters that tells theirs. Please understand that. But uh, we had the, these intercessors in the, in the meeting... And I was going to give report, and it would be a confirmation to many of them. And many of them, uh, the wife had notes there of which ones called at different times. So when I was telling experiences, or what was to be telling experiences, I would look at them knowing who they are and explain to them, and this is what happened when you were interceding. So they could hear it right from my own lips in a personal way. It was going to be that kind of a meeting, and I say it was going to be. But the Lord had another plan for it. We had uh, everybody brought uh, a hot dish and a salad and a dessert, okay? And it was going to be a dinner at noon, and then we were going to go back and have maybe a couple more hours, and then that would be enough time, we thought. So at 10 o'clock in the morning, we began with prayer, and then I explained that the Lord has given my wife a song that would fit right in. So she began playing her auto harp and singing. As she was singing, the glory of God came down in that room. Now, if you have ever experienced the glory of God, you'll know what I'm saying. But let me explain a little bit if you haven't. When the glory of God comes down, there is an awesomeness that comes over you. There is an awareness of His awesome presence. To some people, it can be a terrible experience. Because you're physically, spiritually not ready for it. But irregardless... If the glory of God comes down and you are totally not ready for it, you may jump up and run out of the room. But in this case, not one jumped up and ran out. Now, we had many people there that were in their 80s. We had people there that, that couldn't walk real good because of their hips and things like this. But when the glory of God come down, I went out of that seat flat on my face. And what I mean by flat on my face on the floor is my nose was touching the floor. And down deep in my innermost being was billowing out of my lips. Holy, holy, holy. I couldn't, I, I could have stopped it, but I didn't want to. His presence was so awesome. That's the only expression I could give that my being felt was adequate for that presence. You understand what I'm saying? And many, the same holy, holy was billowing out of them. And I could tell they hit the deck too because their voices were coming all around me. In that presence, as that, that awesome presence of His glory came down, and I no more than realized my wife's even stopped singing. She's down beside me. I could hear others crying out. Some were repenting. But as that I, I, just enough time to recognize that others were on their faces. That's all the time I had, and instantly I was walking on the streets of gold. Now, I was in a totally different realm when there I was, right on the streets of gold. Crying holy, I had no idea. I did not petition the Father to, to come to heaven. It was a surprise to me. <laughs> I didn't expect it. But I will never forget the first sensation I experienced. There I was on the streets of gold. It was like I hit the deck running, so to speak, only walking. I came on the street of gold and I started to take a step. And I was looking down 
And I saw the street I was on, and I had never seen anything like it. The gold was so pure, it looked transparent. And I was afraid. I actually hesitated with my foot and brought it back and set it down where I had beside the other one. Why did I do that? It was so transparent, I thought if I stepped forward into it, I would sink into it. It was that clear. Then I looked at it, and I looked up the street of gold with this thought. I, I know it's gold, but it's so clear. I wonder if it's clear all the way like this. And I wonder if it turns to more of a gold color as I look up it. So I was looking down. I looked up to look up the pavement of gold that I was standing on. And that's when I laid eyes on a person walking in front of me in white raiment. When I saw that white raiment, I forgot about the street of gold. Now, I can explain to you, I don't know if others have explained to you any detail about the street of gold, the streets of gold. I told you it is, it is crystal clear. The, the street of gold are crystal clear, and yet they have a golden hue to them. And <laughs> I held up a glass one time. Actually, I saw it on the table, and the sun was coming through pretty bright, of of cherry 7-Up. And there was a kind of a prismatic glow through it from the sun hitting through the window. I picked it up and looked at it in the window like this, in the sun. And I thought, oh my goodness. That is the closest that I can explain that the street of gold looks like. It, has, it is a transparent color, a goldish cherry red hue. Yet, it's transparent. Now, that's the only way I know how to explain the gold. Now, I worked for five years in the city of Phoenix, Arizona at, the, at Motorola in the science labs, and I tested metals and, uh, in the metallurgical lab. I tested metals for purity. And uh, when I did that, I could tell you what percentage that gold or silver or platinum copper, uh, brass, what percentage that metal was of purity and what percentage of impurities was in it. Now, I had seen gold that was as fine as my, what hairs left, uh, of my hairs. There were gold wires that we used to put in units that went to the first shot to the moon when man walked on the moon. That takes it back a few years. But uh, I've also worked for a living along with the ministry in life. So I haven't worked total faith in the ministry all my life. It's consistently the last 17 years, but intermittently in those previous years of the 30-some years of ministry. But uh, in that understanding of gold, I believe it was because of that understanding that I had to analyze what I was looking at. And this is where it is difficult to explain in earth language what you experience. You understand what I mean? I, I, get, I get feeling so awkward when I get into try to get into details. I would love to just be able to just pour out detail to you of, of the sensing that I had, the thinking that I had. I can't do it. it we're in a, wrong, a different realm here. Uh, it just isn't the same. I can't compare things here that in heaven, that are in heaven. It doesn't work. Everything here is so degenerate compared to what is in heaven. Everything in heaven is so pure and perfect. There is nothing in heaven that is impure, imperfect or impure. And so it is difficult to adequately explain these to you. But I want to go on to explaining the robe. When my eyes fell on the robe or the, the white garments that this person was wearing in front of me, I call it a robe because it was one continual flow like a gown. I couldn't tell you if the person in front of me was a man or a woman. That didn't catch any of my attention. It didn't even catch my thoughts. Because what caught my thoughts was the white raiment that that person was wearing. As I looked at that, number one, I had never seen raiment so white. It glistened. It was alive. It was radiant with whiteness. It was radiant with purity. 
It was radiating something from it. It was speaking a message straight to my innermost being. And as I walked and tried to get a little closer, I forgot about the entire environment of heaven watching that garment because that garment was speaking to me. And all of a sudden, I begin to realize in looking at the weavings of that garment what it was saying. That white raiment was giving me a complete testimony of every work of righteousness that that person had done in their life. I could literally read every good deed that they did unto the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Their entire garment gave the whole entire account of the works of righteousness that they had done from the day they became born again. And I, I, I feel inadequate again to explain this portion to you to help you, but I must help you in some way to understand. But I, I feel so he, feeble about it because it, it's difficult for me to talk about this part because I, I want to choke up. It's hard. But I'm going to do the best I can to help you understand this. That garment, as it was speaking the works of righteousness to me, it made me so in love with Jesus. It just filled my heart with such gratitude that everything in me wanted to run into the arms of Jesus and just get lost, telling him I loved him. The works of righteousness so emanated his character, his love, his equipping, his gentleness, his long-suffering. All of his virtues and all of his traits came through in testimony of that person's works of righteousness in a way that made me want to live my life pure, holier, and more righteous than I ever had before. It challenged me to want every second of my life to serve Jesus. And as I was walking and following and looking on this garment and my heart and my whole being were just swelling with praise, all of a sudden in my peripheral vision along the, the golden pavement, I looked and I saw these beautiful colors and I looked and they were flowers. I have never on the earth, and believe me, I've loved flowers since I was a little boy. I used to plant flowers all over the yard. I would go out and find wild flowers. I'll have to interrupt right there, but I encourage you to get all six of these DVDs. Only $7 each. Gift of $42 gets you all six of them. Translations to Heaven. I was dead for an hour and 45 minutes. Six hours in Heaven. The Fourth Beast. Prophetic Warnings from God. Visits to Heaven and Hell. All of those from Bree Keaton, Dean Braxton, Henry Gruber, Howard Pittman, Rick Madison, and Pastor Massey. All available for a gift of $42 or more at prophecyclub.com or by calling 785-266-1112. prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. 785-266. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. We have put the collection of the best of the 2016 DVDs together in an awesome gift offer. First, Miracles in Pakistan, Pastor Masi tells the story of 23,000 Muslims that he led to Jesus in Pakistan. Then in his DVD, Visits to Heaven and Hell, tells about going to heaven once and twice to hell, and it will scare and then the third one is the Babylonians are coming. His nine dreams that God gave him about judgment on America. Then Bree Keaton talks about explosive prayer strategies, emergency prayers that work. Finally includes Lindsay Williams' new DVD, Trump Speaks to the Elite, and how Trump changed things and the new plans of the elite. Five DVDs valued at $168, all available now for a gift of just $75. Helps us stay on radio, okay? That's valued at $168, all for a gift of just $75. Prophecyclub.com, 785-266-1112. Prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. The best of 2016. Order now. 